pro-Palestinian activists hosted a demonstration inside the offices of Zim. Zim is an Israeli-owned international shipping company. Activists were calling out that some of the exports being shipped by Zim are military exports used against people in Gaza. Could you uh, could you tell me a little bit about what happened this morning at uh, at Zim? Um, yeah, for sure. So um, this morning, um, answering to the glo- the call for a global strike um, to demand a ceasefire and um, an end to the siege on Gaza, um, there has been a call for a global strike um, from people in Gaza and across the world to stand with Palestine. Um, so answering to this call, there have been activists in both Montreal and Toronto that occupied uh, Zim offices. And the reason they occupied Zim offices is because Zim is um, a shipping company, an Israeli shipping company um, that has been uh, transporting arms from uh, the Western world into Israel, supporting in its genocide against the Palestinian people in Gaza. Is there anything you could say about uh, like how the demonstration was hosted in terms of like, I, I saw photos of people like laying down? Yes, so there was actually a staging of a die-in um, in the uh, in Montreal in the lobby of the offices of uh, Zim, and they were reading the names of the martyrs as a representation of what these um, shipping companies are doing by uh, uh, trading these arms from Canada um, straight into Israel. And for context, Zim is one of the largest ten shipping companies um, internationally. In Toronto, um, they they were able to get up to the offices and then there was a strong uh, police response um, that kicked them out of the office. So the rally continued outside. Um, same happened in Montreal, where we saw there were uh, so many police officers trying to um, stop this peaceful protest from happening, um, which was essentially a die-in reading the names of the martyrs. Um, so what this aims to achieve is two things. One, this shows that Montreal and the companies in Montreal, which are using the Canadian railways, um, the Canadian ports to actually export these arms um, to Israel and support logistically in the genocide. Um, Zim has actually said very clearly that they want to support, quote unquote, the national interests of Israel. And all of the Israeli politicians have clearly said that they want to be uh, conducting this genocide in Gaza, calling the people of Gaza human animals. So um, this is straight logistic support, uh, logistical and military support um, to continue this war on Gaza. Do you know what kind of uh, like weapon Zim is sending? Um, so unfortunately, um, the shipments don't 
generally classify what exactly is in the shipments, but it is classified according to class classes. So class A, B, C, D. And generally, Zim shipments are class A, which is highly explosive um, shipments or highly dangerous shipments, um, which means that they are transporting uh, weapons. And uh, we know that Zim also transports a lot of uh, military equipment from um, military manufacturers here in Montreal, like Lockheed Martin, um, L3 Harris, and many others that exist in our cities. And we can also see, um, if you track the Montreal port, you can see Zim uh, shipments coming in and out of the of, of the port of Montreal. Thank you. Um, why are I, I mean, in this protest, but also in the last few weeks, there's there's been a lot of actions, you know, uh, such as the highway blockade near Lockheed Martin. Um, there was the Jacques Cartier bridge blockade. Why do um, examples such as these, you know, disruptive protests, why are they essential to the movement? Yeah, definitely. So I think these protests serve uh, multiple layers. First of all, they're a way of raising awareness um, and bringing um, attention to something that we've been peacefully protesting and neither the government officials nor um, the um, the UN or anyone is able to intervene to actually call for a ceasefire. So when you're on that bridge and you know that it has been blocked for a reason and for a cause, it's a small inconvenience that actually brings attention to that. But the more important thing is that we're trying to send the message that there's not going to be business as usual. There's, there's going to be interruption to uh, usual life when there are thousands of people being killed um, on television in front of our eyes. Um, and this has happened many times in history. And after it's done, people say, how did this actually happen? So this is actually an action that shows that we are here to stop it in any way possible, even if that causes inconvenience uh, for the people. And the third layer is that it actually causes an economic hit um, when these disruptions are made, when railways are blocked like it was blocked in, in Montreal. This is because we're saying that um, you cannot keep Keep profiting off of the genocide of the Palestinian people. We can't keep railways, which are actually also transporting military equipment, um, but also transporting other goods. Um, we want to have an effect on the economy, on the politicians, on any aspect of Canadian life, because they haven't been taking the stance that most of Canadians want from the politicians to take. Thank you so much. Um, I think that answered my last question uh was there anything that i didn't ask that you want to share is you think is important for montrealers to to consider in these times um i don't know do you want to talk about the global strike or do you think that's yeah know, if you're open to it yeah um could you just kind of explain a little bit about what it is and you know why it's important I guess maybe like the boycott movement, but are you also open to saying something about the, the revival of the boycott movement? Because I know BDS was not as big the last few years. Um, so what we're actually seeing today is mass civil disobedience. And there's not one organization. We're seeing a broad movement. If you look at the Shut It Down for Palestine movement or the global strike that we're seeing today or the mass boycotts that have been happening across the world and specifically in the Arab world, we are seeing that people are taking action on their own. There are mass calls that are being answered that are coming from Gaza and elsewhere. For example, today, um, the global strike was just called a few days ago and it was really just pushed for in, in, in the West yesterday. And we've seen thousands of people post on Instagram. I think it was around 80,000 posts on X or Twitter um, with the hashtag strike for Gaza, where people are not going to work, not going to school. Thousands of companies across the Arab world called for a strike. There are videos of shops being closed all over the world um, supporting um, this strike. And these are uh, effective um 
ways of disobedience that we've seen um, in Palestinian history, for example, in the first Intifada, um, for months and months and even years, um, there were days where people would strike and it would stop the economy and put it to a halt completely. And this put a lot of pre economic pressure um, on Israel when the when they um, stopped the, the economy there in, in the West Bank, for example, in Gaza. Um, and so these these methods have worked in the past. They have they have put pressure on on the, the targets that we are trying to target. And we're seeing a wide movement worldwide reusing these tactics to pressure um, for an end to the complicity of the Western world, for an end uh, uh, of this aggression on Gaza and um, for lifting the siege so that humanitarian medical aid can enter Gaza. Um, so many people feel powerless with the politicians that you know, have been elected um, to not just call for a ceasefire, but but to end, you know, Israeli occupation and all forms of violence that Palestinians are experiencing. Do you think that through a boycott, you know, it, it's a form of reclaiming power uh, when we can't seek justice from our own politicians and, and power through deciding where our money goes? Yeah, so um, unfortunately, this is a slow process. You know, this has this movement that has uh, risen up again in the last two months has been also being built has been has been built over the last twenty years, um, and we've seen calls for boycott, um, motions for divestment. All of these things have helped in in raising the consciousness of the people towards the Palestinian struggle and has obviously culminated in this mo moment that we're seeing today, um, which shows us that movements take a long time to build and these actions um, accumulate over each other to actually have an impact on, on the general politics um, of the world. So boycotts are actually a very effective way. We've seen them work in, in, in apartheid South Africa um, and we've seen numbers coming out of uh, Starbucks, for example, um, um, I was actually um, in Jordan just two months ago, and if you pass by any Starbucks or McDonald's, there is actually nobody in those stores. And so this is actually causing a hit. Um, and we've seen that in the numbers. I think Starbucks lost $11 billion in the last two months. Um, and these are effective because not only are they hitting these companies directly, but they're also sending a message that any company that dares to support genocide will be targeted and will be boycotted. And I think that's a strong message um, to send to companies. Thank you. Um, and then I wanted to ask, uh, you mentioned that it's a slow build, a movement like this, BDS. Um, in terms of having a, a specific call to action for a boycott today, what's the necessity of, of having this specific day? So I think the call for a strike on a single day is um, is a show of strength, first of all, um, but it's also showing everyone around us, right? If you go to a store and you see that it's striking for Palestine, it means that the people are willing to take action for Palestine, but it's also having a significant hit on the economy for one day. But also people are not striking and not doing anything. They are striking and joining in either protests or in picket lines or in actions like the one that happened in Montreal today or um, are calling their MPs. Um, so there, it's also a, a day of focused action um, for Palestine and raising awareness about uh, Palestine. So it has an effect on the economy, but it's also bringing attention to the world of like, if you're not going to work, your your colleagues are asking you, why are you not going to work? And that's having an effect on both the economy, but also um, raising awareness about what's happening in Palestine. Um, were the calls for this uh, this national strike, did the calls come from Palestine? Yeah, so there were a few calls that came from some of the journalists and activists that have been covering what's happening in Gaza on Instagram. And then um, it was popularized through different activists across the world and news channels. Um, I don't actually know the exact source, but it has been popularized through those accounts that I've seen. Thank you. Um, and then what 
you mentioned calling MPs, joining picket, picket lines. Is there anything else that um, Montrealers and, you know, anyone globally uh, can do to, to, to take part in this strike? Yeah, I think um, just continuing the boycott, um, continuing to let people know that we are striking for Palestine and this is a cause that's noble enough that we're willing to take the risk and keep the momentum going. You know, a lot of our politicians bet on the fact that we're going to get tired and we're going to stop and we're going to get used to the numbers of people getting uh, martyred. Uh, We're going to get used to seeing hospitals bombed, but we're also here sending a message that that's not going to be um, they're not going to get a, a, away with genocide while we watch every single martyr for us is a life worth saving and fighting for. Thank you so much. Um, is there anything else you wanted to discuss that I didn't ask about? No, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you.